Now we take a tour of duty. First, Trevor Phillips investigates the Wimbledon FC phenomenon in the London programme, which contains some strong language. They call them the Dons, but there's nothing academic about the way that Wimbledon play football. They have one of the hardest and dirtiest reputations in the game. To their supporters, they're giant killers who take on the top clubs and win. To others, they symbolise everything that's wrong with the English game. Tonight, the London programme goes behind the scenes with the Crazy Gang. This was Wimbledon at their training ground last week, preparing to meet one of the greatest clubs in the world, Real Madrid, in Spain. Not long ago, the idea of Wimbledon playing in Europe would have been a joke. But despite being the team with the smallest following in the Premier League, this season could see them qualify to play against the best in Europe. Uh, I think we terrified them, to be fair. Um, and I think we do really well. I think we have enough passion about us, enough belief, and now we're getting much stronger, we're getting more respect now, probably, than we've ever had at this club. Wimbledon's come a long way in a short time. The club was playing non-league football until only 16 years ago. Since then, it's had a startling rise. 1977, elected to the fourth division. 1983, promoted to the 3rd Division. 1984, straight into the 2nd Division. 1986, League Division 1. And then, two years later, Wembley. And not only did they win the FA Cup, they beat no less a team than the mighty Liverpool. In only 11 years, they had risen from the very bottom of the league's 92 clubs to grab British football's most glamorous prize. But their rise has seen them become the most controversial team in England. There's, there tends to be the image of, of Wimbledon, the, the crazy gang, um, their activities in the dressing room before the game, the, the kind of um, the expressions of our rather um, violent society are there. That's part of the game. Uh, that they play. Uh, the game they play on the pitch tends to be so physical that it does intimidate opponents. Wimbledon's off to a great start this season. They've only lost two games and they could be headed for Europe. However, the Don's antics both on and off the field have turned them into the bad boys of English football. But are they just a bunch of untalented oiks? Well, for the past three weeks, the London programme has had privileged access to the club that generates more controversy than any other. Tonight, we go behind the hype and the tabloid headlines to reveal the inside story of Wimbledon FC. A cloud hangs over English football. With England's exit from the World Cup a virtual certainty after last week's 2-0 defeat by Holland, there's a gloomy debate about what went wrong. Many believe we should adopt the fluid passing game of the Continentals. Others say we should stick with our traditional long ball game. To see the English style of football, watch Wimbledon at work. Fast, physical, but arguably not very attractive. Well, the Wimbledon style is generally perceived is a, 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 a perpetual succession of long balls and intense pressure on the opposition. But last season particularly, I felt they were coming away from that. I felt they were playing a lot of very attractive football. This season, I've been rather disappointed to see Joe Kinnear defending that kind of football. I'd always felt he was taking them away from it. It's not a style that attracts the critics, but it does attract the attention of the referee. The team's disciplinary record last year was 69 yellow cards or cautions and five red cards for players sent off. 
It was one of the worst records in the league and earned them a suspended fine of £25,000 at FA headquarters. Well, their disciplinary record is, is not satisfactory. Uh, they're as at home on the steps of Lancaster Gate as they are on the, the terraces of their own football stadium. Uh, they have a lot of hearings, um, uh, they get a lot of punishments. Uh, we have um, the likes of Vinnie Jones trotting up there repeatedly. This incident with Gaza during a game between Wimbledon and Newcastle took place in 1988. Vinnie got into even more trouble last year for appearing in a video exposing the dirty tricks that can take place on the field. Alive, Off the pitch, too, they've been accused of yobbish behaviour. <laughs> they were up to their tricks in Spain last week when the local press asked for a group photograph. <laughs> this, after England's defeat and violent behaviour from English fans, led to one newspaper branding the crazy gang a national disgrace. Even the club's owner, Sam Hammam, has got into hot water. At the start of the season, he was accused of daubing obscenities in Wimbledon's dressing room to psych his team up. Wimbledon's antics mean that they're rarely out of the headlines. To outsiders, this may just look like yobbish behaviour. But in fact, it's all part of a carefully calculated psychological strategy. The Don's crazy gang image is designed to build their own team spirit while striking fear into their opponents. Intimidation is part of the uh, process. You have to do it within the rules. It has to be morally correct, but you have to be able to psychologically, if you can, win the war over your uh, opponent on the day. Now, uh, if anyone's suggesting that we do or carry any procedures that are not according to the rules, I would dispute that. It may be that they won their most famous victory before they even stepped onto the field. At the FA Cup final in 1988, Wimbledon seized the initiative from hot favourites Liverpool by intimidating them in the tunnel before the match started. Applauding the Wimbledon and the Liverpool fans. Yes, I, I mean, there was, a, there was a, the famous tunnel incident where, you know, the few shouts were said in the tunnel and they thought perhaps that we'd be intimidated by the atmosphere in the whole event. I mean, in the end of the day, we were very relaxed about it and, and in fact, they looked as though the ones that were intimidated. Is, uh, did get through. The tactic is still in use. At a pre-season friendly against the Kuwaitis, here seen playing Saudi Arabia, Wimbledon so frightened them that they walked off the pitch. What can I say? I mean, uh, uh, they, didn't, the, the, they didn't like what uh, the way game was going, and they uh, walked away. I mean, we suggested, I mean, maybe next time they can play. You know, we have a ladies' team that's very successful. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't know, maybe perhaps they'd like to play them next time. Wimbledon has kind of got itself this fearsome reputation. If I, if I can correct you, we, we don't have a fearsome reputation. We are fearsome. We are a tough team and we want to stay tough. End of story. The job of psyching the team up for a game starts in the dressing room, well before the kickoff. Oh. A crucial part in the process is played by the team's ghetto blaster. Pounding music has been a feature of the pre-match atmosphere ever since Vinnie Jones introduced it in the 1980s. It all helps to create a clannish feeling and a strong team spirit. Even Stanley Reid, their 85-year-old chairman, is at home in the dressing room. Here he's just one of the lads. It's all part of the Wimbledon way. Everyone sticks together. 
<laughs> How do you summarise the spirit of Wimbledon? We're constantly being asked this. I don't think anybody can put it into words. You, know, you have to be here, you have to feel it, you have to smell it. You can't touch it but you can almost feel it yourselves inside. It's something different. I don't know how. How would you summarise it? You know yourself. Look at this nice. Look where we are in the league. Look what we've done for the last six or seven years. Yeah, nothing. Look how, yeah, nothing. <laughs> look how well the Madman's playing lately. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know look for yourself. Tie. Tie. Look at the tie. <laughs> On the night, the Wimbledon approach certainly seems to work. They're 3-0 up at half-time. But the manager's not so happy. We placed a concealed camera in the dressing room with the club's permission. You fucking didn't even do fucking one thing right, you Stand up right back, Scott. Push, Push in, I'm showing! Back. Fucking play mugs! He singles out one player for not showing Wimbledon's usual level of aggressive commitment. Fucking touch of shit! You've got the freedom of the party, you're going to fucking plum. Fucking shit yourself. It's fucking everything. Bollocks. <laughs> The second half saw another goal for Wimbledon and one for Hereford. A 4-1 victory for the home team to the great satisfaction of those in the boardroom. Yes, I thought uh, it was a good exhibition on uh, uh, these cup games and I thought our, our visitors played extremely good football too and tested us to the full. But uh, we were on target right and uh, that gave us the lift that we wanted. Yeah. They're keeping nice and fucking simple jobs again, aren't they? Fucking can see goals against this fucking mob. Fucking hell, make things fucking hard. All you want to Joe Kinnear had noticed room for improvement. He lambasted the players for abandoning their straightforward style and trying to be, he said, too flashy. And we'll go fucking long way. Once we start fucking fanging and not doing things, you look fucking dreadful. We can have the biggest fights in our own family and in our home. But you come and touch anyone, uh, you know, uh, as an outsider, and, and you'll get a different reaction. Camaraderie is absolutely essential, and this is, there's nothing crazy about that. Wimbledon's players, unlike those at many other clubs, also operate as a tight-knit group in their social life. The night after the Hereford match, its star striker Dean Holdsworth stag night in a busy Watford burger restaurant. It's a team event. Your history, your history, son. Right. I was just, like, just, like, just like to welcome Dean O to the party. We've got flash in us. You know what I mean? Yeah, nice to see the flash here with a red. That's the closest you two have been all season. <laughs> Bet you didn't get behind him like that before, you red. Yes, right. Super Don's might be flying now. Take us out, say. Thank you for Jonah to uh, come in the and stand by. New best, new best man, Scales, he got the elbow. Fast for turning up. Yeah, but for imminent of the week, he ain't had a drink or nothing all that. He's nicked the gold price. And he's broken his car window. He's and we're, we're going to nick it because he bought it from Toys R Us. We are going to. He's a Dutchman. Dutchman turned up with two birds. Wing That's your old trout. And that is it. Thank you, Taps. Good luck. Been emotional. Well, I've been up. That was great. I can't do it in So if you say you love me, I shall quite understand. <laughs> this is a little wig, I know. This is a little wiggy. It's an imagined one, isn't it? You got a number on that? Oh, that's your lucky suit. Is that the lucky suit, then? It's the only suit. Thanks, guys. 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 Thanks
I mean, the spirit of the club is the one thing that's taken us to where we are at the present time, and it, and it continues to get its results. We've often had a sort of feeling that we're against every, every, everybody dislikes Wimbledon, um, the establishment dislike Wimbledon, other clubs dislike Wimbledon. We haven't got a particularly big crowd, so you know, it's everybody against us, and, and that comes to a fruition on the pitch where obviously the team work comes together and we get great results and have got us to where we are now. No, I think they have a, a slight touch of persecution mania. I think if you're going to behave as Wimbledon have so often behaved both on and off the field, of course you're going to have a very high profile and you're going to attract a, a great deal of criticism. I, I think that uh, this seems uh, an almost an integral part of Wimbledon's style, of Wimbledon's character and personality. Wimbledon's style and team spirit add up to a formidable combination on the pitch. But they're matched by an equally effective game plan in the boardroom. Other much larger clubs face a constant financial struggle. But remarkably, despite the fact that fewer people come through these gates on a Saturday afternoon than going to the supermarket behind me, Wimbledon still manages to balance its books. This game against 3rd Division Hereford only attracted 2,000 fans, the second lowest gate in England that night. Wimbledon's wage bill and overheads exceed its earnings from television and the turnstiles by about £5,000 a day. That's £1.5 million a season. To get over this problem, Sam Hammam's strategy has been to exploit the transfer market. Wimbledon has survived in the top flight of football by selling, on average, one of its best players a year. Stars like Nigel Winterburn, the England international defender, sold to Arsenal in 1987. Dave Besant, the first goalkeeper to save a penalty in an FA Cup final, sold almost immediately to Newcastle. Andy Thorne, another Cup final hero, went with him. Dennis Wise later went to Chelsea, and in the last couple of seasons, Keith Curl has gone to Manchester City and Terry Phelan has joined him there. The proceeds, £9 million and a lot of heartache. I don't feel happy when we sell players. I just feel, fine, we couldn't buy players and I can accept that, but we made that player and every time we sell one of our senior players, it's really... It's a kind of disappointment. It's a very major disappointment and, and, and I feel gutted inside. But at the same time, Sam's plan is for Wimbledon to spot its own talent. Players like Warren Barton, bought for a bargain price, but now worth three million pounds. And Neil Ardley, signed as an apprentice and now established in the England under-21s. Another astute move was the handling of the question of the club's home base. Two years ago, Sam controversially took the first team from their old Plough Lane ground to share Crystal Palace's stadium at Selhurst Park. It saved Wimbledon the huge expense of ground improvement after the Hillsborough disaster. When all clubs have literally to spend millions upon millions, and some of them are spending in excess of 20 million to put new stadia, we are here having to spend, in real terms, absolute zero money, nothing. Any improvements here will be paid by uh, Crystal Palace, not by Wimbledon. And uh, therefore, we're in a very pretty position. You see, that's why I get a sore wrist. The third element of Sam's strategy is to recognise that football is entertainment and that Wimbledon needs a larger-than-life image to survive. We use this crazy gang to create a nice zing, a ring to the club. We are the crazy gang. I mean, the reality, as you could see, is we're very meticulous. We do our planning, whether it is footballing or buying or selling or finance, in a very serious way. But we have, it's an absolute must for us to create an image of we don't care, we don't give a damn about anything, and we're trying to pre um, present this crazy gang image to the young supporters, to the people who are 8 and 9 and 10 and 12. It's precisely Wimbledon's crazy image that's attracting attention from abroad. Last week, they were invited to a tournament in Spain to face the legendary Real Madrid. The Spaniards had been intrigued by Wimbledon's eccentric and charismatic style.
When they got there, they found their reputation had preceded them. We've had so much exposure on television, i.e. throughout the TV games that we've played in, that uh, we're beginning to get a little bit of following abroad. And obviously with the characters in the side, they're probably looking for something a little bit different, as they've told us, the reason why we were invited to come out here. It's the beginning of a following which would serve them well if they achieve their dream of getting into Europe next year. Competing in one of the European Cup competitions could mean their financial problems are over. Bigger gates, extra television revenue, more marketing of the crazy gang image. It could mean millions of pounds in increased revenue. For the time being, it was only a friendly. Next year, it could be for real. Delighted with that because uh, it's invaluable experience. You come to places like this and uh, every player's dream is to play against the real Madrids of this world. And the players are jumping out of their skins. They're thoroughly pleased with themselves and uh, it's going to be a hell of experience for us because should we get into Europe next season, this will stand us in good stead for that. It seems like a dream come true. Yeah, for them, yeah. They, they couldn't have expected to play the Super Dons on a Monday night. Very lucky, I, I should think. <laughs> Oh, it feels great, it's a great atmosphere in here, there's a bit of a buzz around here, and uh, that's all buzzing, and uh, it feels good. No, all of this, Steve, you're like all around. Check my ankles, I know what they're like tonight. No, we're looking forward to it, I mean, we've we, we, we come a long way. You know, here we are in a position where we're now playing almost in Europe, you could call it. There's some big sides out there, some big players out there. And it's nice, I think the lads deserve it. I think Wimbledon football club deserves it. No, it's, it's another, it's another game. It's a great experience for us, you know, coming out. It's a beautiful stadium in it, and uh, you know, mind you, there's all these good players and all that. I wouldn't know one of them if I saw them, would you? Yeah. So here they are, the crazy gang running out to meet Real Madrid, champions of Europe six times. In Dino's case, it's in somebody else's shirt with the name taped over. He should have been on honeymoon, but some things are more important. Before the kickoff, Wimbledon are left as onlookers as Real get all the attention. In the first half, events took a predictable course. But then Wimbledon launched a typical fight back. They eventually went down to a late winner. Wimbledon's rise from non-league obscurity to facing the might of Europe reads like a fairy tale, but the team's critics remain unconvinced. If every team in football played that way, then we would just really create a bunch of large physical specimens with no grace and no skill and no natural ability and no beauty to give to the football watching public. I wouldn't want to watch a game populated entirely by Wimbledons. I think the most important, most fundamental thing that keeps me going on in football is I do not look at Wimbledon as just a football club. I think this club represents every small club in England. It represents every small business in England. This is what Wimbledon is. We are the basic people. We are the champions of the small man. 